everybody and welcome back to Let's Play RimWorld Alpha 8 Doing our own personal challenge once again the um A Man's Gotta Eat in which uh All of our colonists are supposed to be either naked or uh wear cloth made only out of human leather and We must eat the flesh of any colonist that we find so um First off, I should actually start this video by saying that things are going to be a little bit different than, um, uh, most of our other videos, um, because I recorded this video just, uh, yesterday, because it was supposed to go up yesterday, but then Audacity, for some reason, decided to go ahead and tell me, hey, you know what, Brendan, you know what, Egg, uh, I think I'm just gonna cut out halfway through the Audacity recording. I mean, you, you you didn't really want that audio recording anyways. And you know what? I can't really blame him because who knows? Maybe maybe deep down in my heart I didn't want it. Maybe, maybe the passion wasn't there and it was just a video not meant to exist at all. But anyways... So basically this is actually a post uh, gameplay recording. So this is all footage that um... Uh, is from the game which I played yesterday and recorded audio for as well. The audio cut out halfway through, so now I am doing, uh, post-commentary per se. So, um, I'll go ahead and mention everything that I said beforehand, uh, in this video and go ahead and try to, like, keep my process of thought the same as well as listed before. Right now we're looking at Target Practice, who was a, um, suggested colonist name by Cameron Davids. I think I'm gonna go ahead and call that colonist Tarjay, though, because I really, really like the nickname Tarjay for target practice. Then we have Luigi, as suggested by Super Daniel, and Luigi is apparently Super Daniel's pet cat, so that's pretty cute and awesome. Then we have Febby, last but not least, who is suggested by Adrian Pepperoni. So, anyways, as I was saying at the be very beginning of this episode, when I was looking at the dead bodies down at bottom, is that. I really, really want to be able to utilize those before too long because, um, because the, uh, the bodies are about to decay in less than a day. But unfortunately, as I do not know quite at this point, there's no way I'm going to get that butcher's table set up within time. So those bodies are going to be pretty much completely useless and they're just going to start rotting and decaying uh, across the map. That actually is the reason to get the crematorium built. When I was recording this video, I was saying that based on... um. Uh, the challenge that we've set up for ourselves, the crematorium would be 100% useless. And that's what I thought before, because we're going to be getting rid of all of our human corpses, um, by eating them and all that, or at least turning them into leather at the, the butcher's table. So, um, I, I thought that there was going to be no way the crematorium would be useful, but actually I forgot that if, if we don't get rid of the bodies in enough time, then it makes a hell of a lot more sense to get rid of them with the crematorium, or at least bury them, so we could do that for the time being. But anyways, we're dealing with this jerkwad out here. Uh, I'm trying to, like, get them to melee attack him at the moment, and I forgot that you have to select colonists one by one, and then have them right-click him. And why just move Luigi down like that was that I wanted Febby, since Febby's the one with the knife, and the best melee attacker on our squad. I wanted Febby to get out there first. I don't really think there was any reason to do that. But this guy is gonna go down pretty easily. He was, uh, kind of a silly dude. Basically, he came, just smacked up our base a little bit, and then, uh, when we came out and started punching him and stabbing him, he's all like, oh, guys, oh, no, stop it, guys, oh, I didn't really want to fight, oh, gosh, golly, no. And then, um, he had a horrible, horrible time with his life. So, uh, one thing that I actually definitely want to mention was, um, uh, some of the comments that you guys made. One of them starting off, um, being, uh, by Jet King Knight. He was saying that, uh, for the time being, since it's hard to get power flowing through our whole place, maybe we should go ahead and line a bunch of power cords down. That was something that I actually was planning on doing in this video for, um, for a while, but it actually ended up turning out pretty well by the end of things, getting power going and all that. We even, we don't get, uh, cables down for it. I think I might have actually forgot to do that. But we actually get our geothermal generator set up to start, uh, being in the works. So there we go, we're having Luigi go ahead and, uh, rescue Coffee, our newest, um, colonist to be, for sure. And, um, then I'm starting to realize that, whoa, 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 we need to start getting a lot more wood because we don't have enough wood for the butcher's table, and that is by far 
one of the most critical things for us to um, work on right now. Because I, it, it pretty clearly isn't even winter yet in the tundra, and, um... Well, actually, uh, so I, I thought it was gonna be in the negative degrees Celsius, so it's not as cold as I thought it would be, I suppose, but... Yeah, of, of course, one of the greatest threats to the colony is going to be the uh, harsh and fierce cold weather. So we definitely need to get rid of, um, get, I mean, get some, some human hide on our people before too long. What I was actually just, oh, okay, wait, 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 what I'm talking about right now is a, a different comment said by, um, Solus. P Peregrine, or Peregrine, I think, which is basically saying that uh, Solus was wondering, do we need to place a fireplace near those steam geysers? Because, theoretically, steam geysers would be generating a hell of a lot of heat around them. And I thought that was a really smart, unique idea, but unfortunately, apparently that hasn't been implemented into the game quite yet, if, um if that is something that is going to be added later on. Because I was using the mouse cursor to go ahead and see, test out the uh, the different temperatures all over the place on the map, and the temperature inside there with the, um, the, the steam geyser. Oh, I actually might be, yeah, I'm checking it right now. You can see that it's exactly the same as the outdoors temperature is. Granted though, since the door hasn't been closed, or uh, since all the doors for that room haven't been built and closed off yet, that that room is still considered outdoors. So maybe, maybe the steam temperature would actually be more, uh, excuse me, maybe the steam heat would actually be more relevant if the doors were closed. But um, from what I could tell, I'm pretty sure that that was not the case. So here I'm just checking in on our um, our prisoner, making sure he's doing okay. Unfortunately, he has a, a lot of pretty bad blood loss and didn't get like proper medical treatment, I'm pretty sure. I think those bandages are something completely different from the regular uh, medicine treatments that the dudes are supposed to get. But um, even so, I think he actually turns out perfectly okay. When, when most of the damage a colonist has taken, is from either just a straight up knife or um or fisty cups uh, or fisty cuffs not fisty cups I always said fisty cups when I was a kid because that's what I always thought the phrase was I thought it was fisty cups and I never understood why it was a thing so here we go we got our first cargo cluster or at least I think the first one in a while I think it's the first one for the colony, but I'm not entirely sure. So I figured, why don't we go ahead and also chop down some trees in the meantime, if we're going to go ahead and start getting to work on that, because I actually meant for us to select to chop down some trees a wee bit earlier, but I totally forgot about all of that nonsense, because I'm a total big old ding-dong. Big old ding-dong! So, um... Here I'm basically saying I'm happy that the plants are all growing super fast, and lucky for us, we actually don't really need them, because, uh, I was saying the cold snap, of course, destroyed basically all of our crops, but lucky for us, we've got a whole bunch of new ones growing and growing pretty quick, but even more importantly, we have a hell of a lot of food still left over in our, um, in our, uh, oh, what are those things called? Um, I actually totally forgot. All I could think of is pouch. So there we go, we got hydroponics set up. But actually, we're not going to get to work on work on hydroponics for quite some time. Here I'm not exactly sure what to work on. The two things that I think I definitely do decide to work on are the nutrient resynthesis and the stone cutting for this video. Because like I mentioned before, crematorium is honestly kind of point, uh, n not entirely pointless as we discovered from what I already mentioned in this video, but uh, the crematorium is a lot less relevant seeing as we are going to be uh, eating all the human corpses rather than uh, burning them or burying them. Um, but still, the crematorium will certainly have its uses as we discovered. So here I'm figuring out how to set up the wall. I want to get it so it's nice and set up well with the... Um, the wind turbines, but I also want it to look nice, so I decided since um, I don't want to, of course, impede the wind turbine space, might as well go ahead and give it one extra block of space away from um, the walls that are closing off the geothermal generator room on the right. So basically, um, I'm going to, rather than lining up 
the walls for that space with the uh, walls uh, that are going up and down in the geothermal generator room ra rather than lining those up. I'm actually just going to put the one on the left one block farther to the left and the one on the right one block farther to the right. But there we go. We have Luigi doing good old work on the... um. On the butcher's table, and then we'll go ahead, go ahead and start getting those bills created. Uh, one unfortunate thing, though, for how this, uh, how, how things start going down is, of course, those two human bodies have actually rotted at this point, or have begun to rot at this point, so we're not going to be able to get the human hide from them. But, uh, why that is so important is I, I start focusing first on building parkas for our people. Because I figure, you know what, we're in the tundra. We gotta really, really, really deal with, uh, the cold heat. Or the cold and all that, because, um... You know, the, the harsh weather of the tundra is something to, uh, be very fearful of. So, um... But what I wasn't expecting, and I really, really actually should have expected this, is the sheer amount of human flesh that is required to build that thing. I think it's over 125. It's either over 125 or it's exactly 125 that is required to get that thing going. So there we go. We got those two corpses rotting, but we still do have that body and I'm figuring, you know what, if there's still just one day and like a half to get that body going, then we definitely really, really, really need to start uh, working on getting rid of that thing. So. Go ahead, work on the butcher's table. Here's an unfortunate thing I do. I was testing this out. I wanted to see if we get to keep the clothing um, that the people were wearing when we actually used the butcher's table on them. Unfortunately, just like the crematorium, you lose whatever clothing they were actually wearing. So it's at this point that I kind of realized to myself, well, shoot, we just wasted some um, potential uh, pants and a shirt to sell. And really, I want to say that they don't sell for very much, so it's not all that substantial at all, but it actually is surprisingly substantial. Um, the, the, it's, it's what, like, uh, 20 to 50 silver for an article of clothing? That is not something to be ignored. Tw 20 to 50 silver is actually a hell of a lot in some situations. Oh! I wasn't even right. I, I, it was I was actually saying over the amount that it is. So it is 120, but from those two bodies, we got what like 37 human hide or human leather. So um, 35, yeah. So it's gonna take quite some time to go ahead and get those parkas set up. So it's kind of a thing where um. I need to figure out my priorities in that regards. Maybe the parka wouldn't be the best thing to get right off the bat. I mean, obviously the parka would be what would help the most with the cold. But also, um, seeing as our people have been suffering from hypothermia quite a lot in the colony, might make sense to focus more on gathering uh, smaller articles of clothing so we could cover more people with clothes more quickly. As you can see right there, um... Who is that? Tarje uh, Tar is already suffering from the willy-nillies and the shivers and all that, so uh, obviously that is quite unfortunate for us. Here we go, another cargo cluster coming in. As always, that is a very, very nice risk. We got some nice slate blocks, too. I honestly don't know what I'm going to end up using those for. Um, I'm happy to have them. Because, of course, more more stone, the, the merrier. Here I'm saying, like, here we're just going to go ahead and, um... Oh, I thought I actually ended up selecting for everything to get hauled, including the the slate chunks, but I guess that is wrong. Um, because I was about to say, here we're actually, I'm going to start by just selecting the, um, the, the slag, but then I actually swap that up. So, here I'm thinking, like, okay, wh what, what do we want to start working on? I'm thinking of stone cutting before too long afterwards. Um, because I actually, to be completely honest, forgot that you even need to research the stone cutting table. So I was looking at it in there, and I was like, oh yeah, you do need to research it. Bada bing, bada boom, what a silly billy pop chili I am. Um... And so, here we go, starting off to, uh, go ahead and start separating our room. Kind of deciding what we want to use to build the materials with. And I end up going with stone, which I think what I mean, uh, wood, which I think is actually a very, very smart thing. Because we do have that, um, area set up, um, oh, this must be the zone where I just select to, um, 
uh, just grab everything. Yeah, yeah, just like to grab the re re remainder of the limestone, too. Um, because there's no real reason not to, and then we go ahead and start our mining process, because I opened that up being like, oh, okay, that, that mineral deposit of uh, steel is actually pretty close to us, right? And then I was like, oh, no, it's actually, like, on the... Complete opposite side of the map. So I was being kind of a silly dude. Silly dude with a lot of tude who's not really in the mood, but luckily things work out for me. So here we go, setting off that area. Like I said, we're putting the walls uh, one block away uh, to, the, to the right of where the other one was. This is going to be a ra rather sizable room right there. I was a little bit unhappy with how uh, big that room is going to be because that's going to be the communications room. But I actually think it works out okay. Looking at that room now, I actually might have... Uh, did it a bit improperly. I think I should have made it one more block lower because um, uh, I think it might actually impede the wind turbine if I have it going from the left or, or, or if I have the walls start going over closer to the wind turbines later. But anyways, we now have this new colonist on hand. Pretty good colonist. Sucks that he can't do dumb, later, uh, dumb labor or cleaning. But he has a hot skinned trait, which is really, really good. All of his, his wounds are fully healed. He's still got a little bit of pain, but of course, seeing as all of his, um, his, like, status effect things are okay, that's pretty good for, for us. So, um, he's actually both a really, really good colonist and a really bad one in regards to his traits. We gotta pop, uh, drop off those pants because he's not allowed to wear any of those. Seeing as he is part of our nudist cannibal colony, so here we go, I'm going to start saying everything up. Um... Yeah, there I'm saying, like, sucks that he can't do dumb lab labor cleaning. Never seen hot skin. Hot skin is really cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and read that. Obama's body produces tremendous amounts of heat. He isn't bothered by temperatures, which would send a another into shivers, but he also doesn't like heat. So basically, his, um... Every colonist in the game has a minimum and maximum comfortable heat temperature, and his one is raised higher than most people. So, um... Or actually, no, technically it's raised lower. It's lowered. Because his body temperature is higher. So, he could be much more comfortable in cold weather, but he dislikes the heat a lot more. Which is actually really, really, really good for us, seeing as we're in the tundra. So, um... I don't know how hot things get in the tundra during, like, the summer seasons. I imagine, though, since we're on the top of a mountain, it's not going to be that hot at all. So, basically, a hot skin trait is super, super, super good for us uh, to have. But the big negative that I found with him was that he's also psychically sensitive, which is, as I mentioned in the video before, um... One of my least favorite traits in the entire game. I really, really, really hate people who have traits that uh, negatively impact their mental stability. Because, as you guys know, my least favorite part of this game is dealing with mental breaks. I really, really, really hate that kind of thing. But, you know, it's part of the gameplay. So that's what makes it exciting and fun. And, um... And crazy and all that jazz. So it's not that I don't like it from a gameplay standpoint. Uh, I think sometimes it does need a little bit of tweaks and stuff like that. But um, for the most part, I think it's a very, very well designed thing. So, um, hopefully I'll remember to build a bed for Obama before too long. I actually forgot to mention that. Obama was another name suggested by, uh, viewer Veldron. Good old pal Veldron, he's a really, really, um, old viewer, uh, and friend of the channel. I love that guy. Just like I love you all. But, um, but yeah, so we got Obama on the, the team. Thanks, Obama. I'm sure he's, uh, I'm sure actually in all honesty he's going to be able to do a hell of a lot of good for us. Um, because, I don't know, every colonist counts, and he's actually a pretty freaking good colonist, to say the least. So here we go, putting up the, uh, comms console. I'm gonna move it in a bit, because I actually think, you know what, maybe we'll go ahead and put some other table in that room as well, seeing as that room is pretty big. So no reason to have it, uh, take up all that space. Here we go, with the raider who's landing super, super close to the, not just the colony, but our colonists, as you can see, his drop pod is, like, right there. So at first here, I'm, like, kind of freaking 
freaking out. I'm like, oh my god, he's a lot closer than we should be. Especially seeing as, um, uh, Obama does not have a weapon in the colony yet. But, lucky for us, this guy only has a shiv. So, um... So he's not gonna be able to shoot us at all, and honestly, right now at this point in the colony, what I really, really would love to do more and more of, and there's Obama right up there, I had no idea that he was coming down. Right now I'm like, where the hell is Febby? We need to uh, get Febby in, in all this nonsense. But, um, but yeah, as I was saying, uh, r right now at this point in the game, um, I, 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 I think I really, really prefer people to be fighting via melee rather than actually, uh, getting into gunfights with enemies. So, despite us having vastly superior gun power than we should at this point, I still prefer the idea of doing melee because that means that we should take down the dudes really, really fast because we greatly outnumber them at this point. And then also on top of that, we, um, and there's, uh, Febby coming down as well. Um... And then on top of that, it's also going to, um, uh, protect our dudes from taking damage because gunshots are definitely a lot worse than punches. I don't know how, um, uh, the, like, gameplay damage percentages change between knife, uh, knife hits, um, and bullet hits, but... Uh, either way, I'm sure it's bad. So here we go. We got another dead guy. I was actually, to be completely honest, hoping that he would die. So we would be able to get more uh, human hide. And super nice that he ended up dropping us a packaged survival meal. Because we always appreciate that kind of thing. Here, I'm looking at the cowboy hat being like, uh, should we allow our people to wear cowboy hats? Because I really, really love cowboy hats. And at first I was going with yes. But that was until I realized... The amazingness of the fact that apparently you can make you can make cowboy hats out of human flesh. Like that is excuse me. That is way way too cool to pass up. So unfortunately, we're going to be selling cowboy hats as well, but we're also going to be getting some pretty baller cowboy hats made out of human flesh in the future. Here I'm clicking for Luigi to do that work and I'm like, hey, why can't Luigi do the work? Luigi did the work before. And then I realized, oh wait, that's right, Obama's a really good cook. So we actually just swapped Obama to being, uh, being our new, new butcher and stuff like that. So Obama's going to get good work for that. How much, uh, human flesh does that leave us with at the end of this episode? Um... If two bodies got us to 35, then I'm gonna guess that's going to be around, like, 50, roughly 50, maybe more than 50, I would hope. Still, that's a lot of bodies that we'll need to actually, uh, get rid of before we can, um, get our first parka, if we do decide to stick with going for the parka. Um... I did decide, though, okay, 55, awesome. I did decide, though, I will say, that we are not, um, building a cowboy, building those cowboy hats anytime soon, because, uh, while they're awesome and baller, the, the other articles of clothing are going to be much, uh, quite significantly more, uh, important. So there we go, putting down our geothermal generator. Yeah, I definitely don't put down the power conduits, but I'm not even sure if we finish off the geothermal generator in this video. If I was to let you guess, I'd say we probably don't. So then, I also get us the cooking stove going down, because you know what I figure? Um... If we're gonna start getting all this human meat, we better get the cooking stove going, because we need to start cooking it! We need to start eating people! We're the cannibal colony! The cannibal nudists, a man's gotta eat! Doesn't matter if it's human flesh or not, a man's just gotta eat! And a man's gotta eat more and more! So here we go, we're gonna put down a heater in this room to make sure that room can stay, uh, well heated as well. Right now, it's actually getting the heat from, uh, the geothermal generator room because there isn't a door built in between. Or if there is, the door is being held open by the, uh, mega scarabs in the way. Um... And that's one thing I was actually talking about in this video as well. I was saying I really, really need to actually work on some limestone projects. Um, because... Oh, I, I actually meant to put down doors right there, not walls. Um, but yeah, I, I was saying that I really, really need to work on some limestone projects. Because the limestone is holding those doors open, which is laying the cold air in. Which is, of course, very, very, very bad for our people. 
So I need to get something to get those limestones out of the way. At first I was mad about the Mega Scarabs being in the way as well, but really if I could close the door that's connecting it to the outside, then the Mega Scarabs won't work all that much. So eventually I'm actually going to work on a limestone bed, which is very, very good for us, because limestone beds actually cost a surprisingly low amount, at least compared to what I thought they were going to go for in resources. So, um... Uh, in the next video that I do record, I'll probably try to make more limestone beds in the future. If nothing else, just to get all that limestone out of the way. Which is also a very, very important reason for us to get that, um... Uh, the stone cutting table in the works. So I think that's what we work on right now. Ah, oh, dude, do not tell me I work on something else. <laughs> I must be talking about the hospital beds being like, Oh, hospital beds are good. Um, but no, we, we work on stone cutting because that's the smart, the smart thing to do, without a doubt at this point, um, because really, uh, as I'm sure many of you know, the earlier you could get to work with stone, the better, because it's a really, really durable material for your walls, and it's a really, really abundant material. Stone is everywhere in this game, and then it also increases your people, uh your colonists' crafting stat, because they're gonna be doing a lot more crafting. Basically, stone is an all-around positive in this game. Honestly, I don't remember what patch stone was added, or stone cutting was added, but it is actually, honestly, maybe even one of my favorite additions to the entire game. So, Luigi, unfortunately, isn't in a very good spot mentally. Um, I believe it's, um... May what what was that mainly due to? I don't remember 100%. But, um, you know, that's perfectly fine and dandy. I'm gonna take a sec to take a sip from my drink, because I'm a wee bit thirsty here. Alright, here we go with the limestone bed. Um, that's right, the, the biggest negative, it's, yeah, it's only... It's only 25 limestone. That is insanely cheap. Um, but, as I was saying, uh, I, I, I actually figured one of the main negatives in Luigi's health, or mental status, mental health, is the fact that Luigi is sleeping on the floor. So I figured, why don't we go ahead and get Luigi a straight up good old bed, so Luigi won't have to worry about that. And then also I was saying, uh, once Luigi comes in here, we'd have Luigi work on the project, but good old Obama went ahead and started working on it for her because he's a, a good old nice dude and all that jazz. So there goes that. And, um, and there goes cute little Luigi taking a rest. A rest that Luigi deserves like, uh, like anyone else. Oh, cute little Luigi. I'm talking like a leprechaun here. I'm like, oh, cute, uh, cute little Luigi trying to steal my lucky charms and gold. That was a horrible leprechaun impersonation, especially for being an Irishman myself. I'm, 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 I'm actually a lot of things, I should say. Um, <clears throat> I, I live in the U.S., so I don't live in Ireland, but I've got a lot of, a lot of Irish blood in me. But then I've also got some French blood. I've got some English blood. I've got a lot of uh, different heritages in me. Basically, like a little of everything in Europe, though. So it's, it's not like. It's not like I've got Native American in me, or, uh, or Spanish, or anything like that. Um, although Spanish would make sense, since freaking Europe, like I said. Uh, I was thinking more of, like, South America when I said that. Uh, so, here I'm realizing that we are out of wood, because I want to build some more wooden doors, but of course the game isn't giving me the option to specifically select it. So, hopefully before too long I'll actually start grabbing some of that wood. Doesn't really look like I'm doing so, which is a silly billy papa chili move on my part. Here we go, we have a mental break imminent. This is when I really start to panic a little bit, um, because I wasn't really sure how to help this person with their mental break. I even don't remember entirely who it is. Also, one thing that I, I don't remember if I start talking about it around this point, but eventually I do. Um, I, I really start to mention that we definitely need to consider uh, when we are going to actually get our, um... I put a heater there? Oh, don't tell me I put a heater there. That's a really awkward spot for it. 
If I'm gonna put a heater in that room, then I should put it, like, by the doorway. What am I doing? Oh, right here I'm looking at the red outlines and being like, Oh, okay, the red outlines mean what rooms are sharing heat. So since, uh, so those two rooms are actually sharing heat, which is a very, very cool thing for that. Um, what was I just saying, though? Oh, yeah. One of the things that I mentioned at one point in this video is definitely our defenses, because at one point we definitely, definitely want to actually work on increasing our defenses and all that. And that's actually one thing that I could start mentioning right now, which is uh, a really, really cool comment that was uh, uh, left by Terrarian Noobs. I thought this was a super cool and interesting idea. Um... Basically, what Terraria Noobs was saying, okay, yeah, here I'm looking at the mental break and being like, oh god, what do I do about this? Like, because, uh, Febby is about to go cuckoo crazy, but lucky for me, Febby actually goes to get some sleep before too long, and then Febby does, does not really become a problem, uh, at least mentally in the future. Um, <clears throat> but, as I was saying, unfortunately... It really would surprise me if the idea that Terrarian Noobs came up with won't work in the game. But I really hope it actually is a possible viable thing. Um, maybe a useless strategy, not maybe not a very good one, but maybe an OP one as well. Basically, what Terrarian Noobs was suggesting was making a new type of death corridor, similar to... A similar in, like, built-in structural design to our turret death corridor, um, that we have used many a time before. But how it functions differently is that we lock people inside of it. Um, so ba basically we kite them in just like we do with the death corridor where it's the entrance. But then once they're inside, we lock it by, um... Uh, we, we, we lock them inside, and uh, the room is going to be f packed full of heaters, uh, or coolers. E either one would work, I'd imagine. But so, so basically what we would do is we'd either have the heaters set really, really high, or really, really low. And so the goal of the room is to do kind of like a mental warfare on our enemies by... by well, I guess it wouldn't be mental. It's not really bio-warfare either. It, I guess, would it be bio-warfare if you're utilizing, like, nature itself to attack people? I don't know what we would call it, but basically the goal of it would either be to, um, uh, force hypothermia to set in all of them, and maybe even far enough to, uh, to have, like, effects of frostbite, or alternatively, force them to suffer heat strokes and stuff like that. Which I thought was a really, really, really cool and interesting, unique um, idea for for how to kind of like attack our, our enemies in a very, very unique and different way from anything that I've ever heard of before in the game. So I, I, I thought that that was really, really cool. Once again, like I mentioned, really, really wouldn't surprise me if um it's something that simply cannot be done but um i don't know we can hope we can open dream so anyways um i'm pretty sure the video is about to end so thank you all for watching if you enjoyed the video please consider leaving a like a comment and or subscribing if you have not i apologize for the audacity fluke uh of course it's something that was completely out of my control and the next video will be back to its usual uh, style of commentary uh so yeah I'll see you all later.